In my life, I have tried to commit suicide seven times for various reasons. They are mostly brought about by fear of failures. When I see that I am about to fail on something, I feel a deep sense of helplessness, and that sense of helplessness triggers my depression. I started off with attempts of hanging myself, which then grew to other forms of self-hurting, like slashing my wrist and even attempting to jump off from school buildings. At one point, I almost jumped from a school's window, and praise God, I did not push through because I was just on the second floor. I laugh at the foolishness of my suicidal attempts. They are all a senseless and habitual response throughout life, despite me growing up as a Christian. I was at the height of what I believe to be my calling and ministry. I was discipling, preaching, and working in and for the church. In 2016, I was asked to fill in a new position that I believed would take me closer to my calling as I desired to be a pastor someday. Everything was going well, but eventually, pride became a huge boulder. I believed a lie that I should not express my struggles to anyone because they must always think me to be spirit-filled. Aiming to please people, my struggle against selfishness Anger and lust slowly crept in. I lost accountability and began to battle through life on my own strength. The enemy knew where my comfort lies, having solid relationships. On my first Sunday to preach in the satellite, I was surprised to see only my dad attend the service. And he sat there in the crowd proudly, but he was alone and irate. Little did I know that a split between my parents was starting to take place. I swept it under the rug and masked my worries with my other relationships, which later on have all started to be shaken and tested as well. In January 2017, I found out that my mom had left our home. Not knowing the wise, I took the burden on my own. Little did I know depression was already kicking in. My journal had this entry. I feel like I need comfort tonight. My dad is having a hard time. I don't know what to do with family, with my D group, with ministry. I feel alone fighting my battles. Psalm 73, 25 to 26 is my great comfort tonight. My flesh and my heart may indeed fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. However, on January 12, 2017, following days of no sleep and eating and crying out at random parts of the day, I woke up early in the morning and I mindlessly hung myself. Unlike the past six times, however, no one found me on time. I was found around 20 minutes after, hanging lifeless. My father was decided on taking me to the morgue, but he felt led to do CPR on me, which made me breathe again. I was rushed to the hospital and was not declared dead on arrival. But the doctors were telling them I might not make it, or if ever I survive, I might have complications with motor or speech skills. The news spread out and people started praying. Frankly, if you were to ask me, I did not deserve such grace. I was damaged and broken, useless to some extent. But because God is not yet done with me, on January 14, I was revived and was responsive again. After a week in the hospital, I woke up asking about what had happened. And that's when I realized what I have done. I got worried about losing my disciples, my job, my friends, my ministry. Every waking hour, I'd reflect on what else would life have in store for such a failure as me. You see, 
My resurrection story was very much the opposite of the resurrection we celebrate today. Mine is of a failed man. When I got back to life, I had to face the consequences of my failures. Like facing the toughest reality that my life's biggest tragedy wasn't enough to bring my family together. Despite this, I was surprised that the church showed me love and grace. CCF has extended grace and gave me a job even I was, if I was considered a basket case. Every day though, I would come to the office bearing the guilt. It was very humbling. But I praise God and thank the people I work with who walked with me through my recovery. Pastor Peter decided soon after to help mentor me by placing me under his office. He intentionally reached out and dealt with the root causes of my struggles. I was reminded that my response of taking my life is a result of having the wrong focus and being subject to the attacks of the enemy. I was taught to battle Satan's plan by fixing my eyes on Jesus. The road to recovery wasn't easy, but I just held on to this verse in Micah chapter 7, verse 8. Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. Though I fall, I will rise. Though I dwell in the darkness, the Lord is a light for me. It was hard to go through a season of breaking, but I am thankful to God that through Christ, I have risen from the ashes of my defeat. And now I am back to discipling men and slowly but surely serving God through hosting events. Only God knows where this road will lead, but my greatest desire is to stay alive and live this life for Him. I share my story today so that, like me, you will realize that in Christ, we have hope. Even when we are in our darkest, weakest point, even when we have failed big time, we can still run to and depend on Him. I encourage everyone to pray for countless others who are depressed. And most importantly, for those who have yet to find that Jesus is alive and is actively at work in our lives. May today inspire us all to put our hope in Him, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the living King, the author and perfecter of our faith. To God be the glory.